Yet another feature of high performance houses these days is trying to recapture the waste heat from showers because that tends to be our largest use of hot water, often the largest use of hot water. This is a device called a drain water heat recovery unit. Didn't exist, frankly, uh, until about 10 years ago. Now it's effectively code in many markets. You get credit for it in your energy programs such as Energy Star and LEED because it models really nicely. This particular device is five feet long and recovers about 50% of the temperature difference between the wastewater that goes down the center of the pipe and the cool water that's wrapping up its way and extracting that heat. And you can actually feel the difference from cold city water coming in to water at uh, roughly, uh, say, half the temperature gain, if you will, half the temperature difference gain. So it might be 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit here, might be as high as 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit here, and that gets delivered back to the boiler system, just easing stress when you are showering. It also gives you the capacity to more showers at the same time, because especially with the tankless water heaters, because you are recapturing about 50% of the energy. Drain water heat recovery, pretty standard technology in today's world. So Ryan, I wanted to bring you in one more time to talk about Central Vac. You know, we've partnered with Barone a lot. It's kind of a cool concept. You know, we don't see a lot of it in other markets. We see a lot of it in Ontario. What would you say the biggest advantages are for Central Vac? Well, I mean, when you, when you look at the themes of resiliency being one in the home here, I mean, Central Vacuums tend to have a significantly longer lifespan than your, your uprights or your canister type vacuums. So less electronic waste, better for the environment that way. The other thing is, is you're capturing all of your contaminants and your dirt into one central location, right? It's enclosed within sealed pipe. It doesn't really matter how good the filtration is on a standalone vacuum, you're always going to have contaminants coming back into the space. So certainly better for indoor air quality, you know, being, uh, being something that's of paramount importance in a, in a high performance house. And as you know, I have a background in indoor air quality. It turns out the air quality in your house gets worse typically after you vacuum for the very reason you just spoke of. In this case, we vented it straight outside. So all of the pollutants, you know, we capture some of the filter, but all of the rest of the dust goes outside. So that really does improve. Very powerful, of course, more powerful than the typical stand uh, standalone. Yeah, I mean, even when you look at your higher end vacuums, you know, significantly more suction on, on units like this. So contributing to a much cleaner environment, which helps, uh, again, indoor air quality and, and occupant health. So we ducted it to three locations, basically just figure out the length of hose, do a bit of a roadmap of you make sure you can reach every spot in this house. This was three, but one really cool spot is that little toe space uh, kick uh, kick sweep. I think they call it sweep kick sweep, which allows you just to sweep uh, into that from hard surface flooring. So I want to just show you a little bit of that too. It's a very cool feature, one that a lot of people like for sure. So we're big fans of the Braun guys. You know, you know them as kitchen fan and bath fan guys, but in this case, they make this really cool product that just improves, I would say, the lifestyle. And the family loves this concept. We actually think we might be able to get some of the kids to do some vacuuming, so that'll be good. Hey Derek, uh, you and I have been working together and actually your dad for over 35 years. You guys really pride yourself on building a tight house. Yeah, well that's uh, one thing we really focus on uh, right from the start of every, uh, of every home. But any issues, any challenges? Sometimes uh, when a house is, is very airtight, you have to be careful of any, uh, any uh, exhaust uh, fans you have. Are you finding that people seem to want bigger and bigger fans? Yeah, it's very common. A lot of Viking and, and different companies make some really big fans for more for commercial type use. And so when that fans run, tight house, hard for it to find air, two real challenges. First and most important, if you had any combustion spillage plant like a fireplace, that would potentially backdraft. Are you doing many fireplaces these days? Yeah, we do fireplace pretty well every house. Really? Yeah. Gas fireplace or wood? Mostly gas. Okay. So the gas isn't as big an issue, but a little bit of wood, and sometimes people up in, the, in cottage country like the idea of burning wood. The second issue is, so that's the most important issue, but there's also an issue with just um, capacity of the fan itself. If it can't find any air, the fan actually doesn't work correctly. So you've been putting in for how long, like a makeup air system? Yeah, for about 10 years now. And what's really cool is great companies like Brown, you know, the leader in kitchen ventilation, have now come to the table and said, we understand that's an issue. So they actually create a really nice little system. And, and all it really is is this pressure switch up here. And when the range hood comes on, it senses that. And then back in the mechanical room later, we'll have a look at the makeup air duct. How difficult are these for you guys to install? Fairly straightforward, to be honest. And so it's always a question of where do I put that air? So we don't want cold air streaming in everywhere. 
um, seems to be a pretty good solution. Yeah, it works great. So you get to do the advantage of air tightness and still have the large capacity range hood and a fireplace if you wanted. Yeah. Cool. So if you recall, Derek and I talked about makeup air for large range hoods. In fact, this house is tight enough we have makeup air in both the dryer and the range hood. It's a pretty simple device that's just going to dump into, kind of tucked away here, but it's just going to dump it into the mechanical room. I have not insulated it yet, just so you could see it, nor have I extended the pipe. Ultimately, we'll take it up a little bit higher. But I just want you to get a sense of how that works, and we'll just show you the operation now. Hey, you may recall in the earlier video clips, we talked about radon control. We showed you the radon foam block. We talked about the radon barrier, that tough, uh, thick plastic liner. And then what I wanted to show you is the sum total of that. This is just a simple stub up. This is all part of that system. So this allows you the opportunity to put a fan on this and duct it to the outside. So you're extracting radon and moisture from under the slab. So we talk about air quality, we talk about resiliency. We certainly want the house to be healthy over the long term. Radon is a bigger issue in all markets. You should be conscious of it. This is so easy to rough in. Just a pipe through that floor into that foam bed that allows good airflow uh, from underneath the slab to depressurize the slab. Very cool, very simple. This case, just a rough in. If we determined we did have a radon problem, we'd add a fan to it and exhaust that to the outside. Let's take a quick second just to review you know, the workings of an in-floor heating system. So first of all, I always like to point out the quality of uh, Derek's trades. This is John Bridge, Bridge Plumbing and Heating. Does just a really nice job we still have some pipes to insulate and so on, but I wanted to leave it blank just for the moment. But over on the one side, we've got the hot water running um, for the domestic hot water, but this piping section is for the in-floor. So first and foremost, the variable speed ECM motor pump, uh, which can run off uh, the solar generated. So we have that resiliency in terms of power outages, but really nice to know that the new pump technologies are allowing us to get better uh, temperature control, better water flow control through in-floor systems. We actually have this split into six zones in the slab of the house, so we can control each one of those individually if we want. But typically, we just run off a, a standard thermostat um, because in low load, high performance houses, there's really not a lot of need to do zoning. The temperature is very consistent throughout spaces anyway. So just to simplify that system. So just really simple, relatively simple. Looks like a massive pipe, but in fact, really nicely done so that we have really good control of floor slabs, uh, water flow th through that floor system. On the domestic hot water side, tankless or these flow through instantaneous boilers do need, depending on the uh, quality of the water, do need to be flushed regularly. So John has set it up so that it's really easy just by removing and isolating the zone and pumping through a cleaning solution. It's not vinegar, but think of it as vinegar or water solution. A very simple, safe solution that's pumped through the boiler, maybe once a year, or maybe once every year, depending on the hardness quality. And what's really cool is a good contractor and a good manufacturer will give you those guidelines as to exactly when you need to think about flushing that system, but it's all set up nicely to do it to make it very easy. 